It's so joyful. It feels like you could fly. It really it's it's like uh, I don't know, you can have an an experience that is in your body but it transcends your body. My name is Marta Santos and I am a associate professor of Latin American history at the University of Akron. And I am actually the one that came up with the idea of having a history of salsa class. I thought that this class would be like a good exercise of how could I become a different type of undergraduate teacher. And teaching differently was what attracted me to teaching the history of salsa. I work so hard at salsa and it has become such an important part of my life that I wanted to see if I incorporated it into my work life because I'm a professor and I teach history but I, I feel like these two sides of my life were completely separated. So I wanted to see if there was a way that I could combine the two. And then teaching a class like this was a good idea. I, I think that is bringing uh, a different experience of learning history, for example, for the students. Because we're so used to learning history just by thinking about it and reading and analyzing. And now the students in this class are able to actually feel in their bodies what they are reading and what they are analyzing. We are working um, together with the salsa instructor that um, is partnering with me. His name is Lenin Guerrero and he is from a salsa company in Bedford. And I love to teach, you know, it's like all the time, it's a goal. And it's really interesting to work all together, you know. We are teaching this, you know, to, to spread out about a little about the dancing, but principally the history, you know. I think it's really important to try to understand the culture. And you, to understand the culture, you need to understand the, the history. The historians don't know how to dance, but they can do it. When my students are dancing, I get more nervous, even when I would dance. <laughs> and I'm confident that they will do a Good work. And they, if they practice, we will have a really nice show too. The only thing for me that right now is a goal actually is the time because we are short on time. And, and we, I mean, the kids have to dance to, to the end of the semester. And this is the only thing, is my only worry. That the class is helping us is to be willing to take challenges, to challenge ourselves in, and do things that we never thought we could do, like dance salsa and actually let ourselves be recorded <laughs> while we do it. We are going to be doing, we're going to be learning, we're going to be doing a showcase at the end. And so the students are, are going to be making a lot of progress from actually not knowing anything about salsa to learning and doing a showcase in salsa and this is a very very um, rich experience for the students i think it's you, they are they are putting themselves out there so i am first of all a bio major so i'm just all science classes all day, so this is kind of like, yay, salsa! I get to like look forward to something that's different. And on top of that, it it's not just like something that actively gets you moving. It opens your worldview and it kind of expands it in ways that I don't think you could if you were just to go about a normal history class or your daily life in Akron. It is difficult, it, especially like the first couple times, but eventually. This, um, the dance kind of starts just clicking and the more you do it, the better it gets. I don't think the actual basic steps themselves are that difficult, but eventually Lenny, our instructor, starts picking it up and uh, sometimes we turn at each other and we're like, what did he just do? 
I started loving dance probably eight years ago just at a swing club in uh, at Miami University. And before that, I really just went to meet people. When I got to really dance with people, it was uh, just a form of expression that I never had like a chance to learn before. So uh, once you get to express yourself in that way physically, like it's just, it's really, it's an amazing thing. So my experience with salsa before this is um, I would, I picked it up a little bit in Puerto Rico and Spain when I studied abroad. And then I came back here and I heard about Europa, which is a salsa bar in Cleveland. So my friends and I would go there on Friday nights just to hang out. I like salsa dancing and dance in general just because of the, uh, really the human interaction you get with people that you don't get any other way except for dancing. And salsa has some really deep roots in history that I'm learning about in the class. Um, there's a lot of imagery, just a lot of history there that's just fascinating. I think before I've said, it's kind of a privilege to get to learn something that um, is really a part of another culture that isn't my culture, but it's a way to really get to have that, not just the physical connection with people in the room, but a connection intellectually and culturally with people on the other side of the world. I was kind of blown away by how, I just felt like we were getting very raw with the culture and the true roots of salsa. So it's just really cool picking up another um, little piece that ties into salsa. I, I hope to gain a, an understanding of a culture that I wouldn't have really understood uh, in any way just from reading a book. Um, and really I don't think I would have understood it at all because I didn't know uh, what I didn't know. So I hope to gain uh, a window of understanding into something that is really important part of the world. It's very, just like anything else in life, you kind of pick up the little bits and pieces and then put them together to form something more complex. So when you dance, um, these dances, don't like try to put yourself in the mindset of the culture that you are um, learning and taking from. So I'll remember that. <laughs> So the salsa music and the salsa dance um, emerged in New York City in the 1970s. And this is something that people don't know, right? They, they tend to think that salsa is Mexican or is from Spain, but it actually as a, as a modern form of music and dance that we know emerges in New York in the 1970s. But it really is focused on revitalizing Cuban music, and particularly Afro-Cuban music, like the Cuban song and the Rumba. But because of the very strong relationship between the United States and Cuba, a lot of this music comes to the United States. Um, there are a lot of Cuban migrants that come to the United States in the 1930s, the 1940s, and 1950s, and a lot of these Cuban migrants are musicians. A lot of these Cuban migrants are going to live in New York City. They have, they have the Cuban, they have the Cubans coming, often fleeing the, often fleeing the continuous government changes, and eventually. It comes to a point where by like 1959, they're actually fleeing a bit of Castro's government specifically. Um, Puerto Ricans come to the United States, of course, already after the Spanish-American War, when, uh, when the United States gets uh, Puerto Rico as their colony in 1898 uh, through 1902. So a lot of Puerto Ricans are beginning to come to the United States. The United States government actually sponsors a lot of travel of Puerto Ricans to the United States, and particularly to New York in the 1920s and 30s and even in the 1940s as a form of cheap labor. The United States wants Puerto Ricans to come to cheapen the cost of labor in New York City, right? And so a lot of these Puerto Ricans are going to come and live in these neighborhoods, like in East Harlem or in the Bronx, where they are going to live along with African-American families who were also living and working um, as a working class that also didn't make very good wages. So this is how we get a lot of the Puerto Rican migrants coming to the United States. But by the 1950s, 1960s, we have the first generation of Puerto Ricans born in New York, right? So New Yorkans, and they are um, now creating their own culture. They are creating in the 1960s, 1970s, they are the ones that are going to take 
on the creation of new music like the salsa. The, the Black Power movement is going on in the 1960s. And this consciousness of the African-American community is also felt among the Latino communities. Latino people are also having their own poets, their own consciousness. This is a moment when people are trying to develop their own identities and these are going to be oppositional identities to the United States. And so the Latin community in the Bronx, in the Spanish Harlem in the 1960s, puts forward their ideas about their identity. And those are not just going to be um, political activism, although political activism is part of it. Um, they also want to create a cultural identity. And this cultural identity needs to be different than American identity. So they begin to look at the rhythms like the rumba, the Cuban rumba, the Cuban song, the mambo, and then mixing it with their own, the American styles that they grew up with, because these people grew up with the Beatles, they grew up with um, rock and roll, they grew up with R&B, and so they mix it. It's an amazing time of experimentation, a musical experimentation, and they mix it, and then they create this new thing that is called salsa. Initially, I do feel nervous, but then I think about how I'll probably never see the people again that I'm performing in front of, so <laughs> it's no biggie. I think it's going to be significantly more difficult, but at the end of the day, I'll just pull through like always. Um, so what can be difficult about salsa and rumba and other forms of dancing that we're learning in this class is that they're very different from ballroom. Um, a lot of what you see salsa is ballroom dancing and it follows sort of a, a box step. These dances are much um, more involved with your entire body. Um, that's the African um, traditional aspect of it. Um, so you have to focus on different parts of your body all at one time and it, uh, it involves using different parts and different rhythms, too. Joined this unclass because I had an idea of what salsa was, just fun or um, just kind of like the spicy form of dance. I didn't really know what it was at the time, but it just seemed like fun. I have never performed in front of an audience. I've just done salsa here and there as a hobby. Oh yes, absolutely. I work with Hungarian scouts. We often do folk dances as part of our performance routine, as of our performances, and done a lot of those over the years, whether on stage or over at German Central Park. Or Actually, I have um, at the in the other dance club I was in, probably about 30 people. I think practicing is really fun. But initially, just like anything else, like if you sit down to learn physics, it's frustrating at first, you don't know what to grasp, where to go from. But our instructor Lenny does a really good job of slowing down. Like at first, he will show us everything and we're like, we're gonna do that. Um, but then he'll slow it down and go step by step. And before you even know it, there's these like connections in your brain and you got it down. Um, but it's really frustrating if your other classmates don't show up and do their part. So it's like this class, it has a lot to do with showing up and just being present and being there. We learned actually in an earlier class that there's going to be experts watching our performance. There's going to be some uh, salsa historians and just people that are like kind of prominent in the salsa community, you could say. And I didn't know that. I thought it was going to be just, you know, my friends. But it kind of adds another layer of nervousness, just wanting to get things right, wanting to get things, you know, practiced well, because there's going to be people there that really know about salsa. So, well, pretty nervous. <laughs> um, so for this upcoming performance, I am very nervous because what we're on like week 11 of school. From week one, we've had that mirror. Like we can see what's going on. We don't have to like go like this to see what our classmates are doing. If we get lost, like we could just 
casually look up. So I'm really nervous to see what's going to happen on stage with no mirror and just like a thousand eyeballs looking at you. But. I think I'm a bit more of an, an excited and nervous trend in the sense of like I have a little bit of an anxiety thing but also I'm very excited that this dance is happening and I'm going to do it and it's all a bunch of stuff I've never done before. Number one, there's no retakes. You know, uh, we have to get it right. If we miss a step, we can't just go back to the beginning. But also having people watch you, you know, that definitely adds a layer of nervousness to anything. Also, just the fact that we have all this space, you know, you can't see yourself, you know, you just have to really be on, you have to know what you're doing. You know, we have to practice a lot. Yeah. I'm excited, a little nervous. Um, the outfits are really cool. We've worked really hard. It should be pretty good. Honestly, mostly excited. Just because we have the Friday show first, which is the University of Akron students. Um, so we kind of get like a little warm up there and see how it actually goes in front of people. And then on Saturday night, the reality is we'll probably never see them again, so. Showcase, I'm feeling pretty confident. I've practiced a lot. I know what exactly I'm doing and I think I'm just ready for it. It's just kind of weird because we've been practicing it like all semester and it's like only three minutes and we're gonna go and we're gonna dance for three minutes in front of who knows who's gonna be there. It's a really small place, but then we're also performing it again at their studio. So I don't know, excited. I'm so excited. I'm ready to get out there and just do a great job. Um, definitely going to be practicing from now to then, but just really stoked. Um, I'm feeling pretty nervous. Uh, I feel pretty confident though. We have practiced quite a bit, so it should be fun. Terrified. Um, nah, it, it'll, it'll be fun. Uh, we've definitely practiced a lot. We've got a lot of the routine down, the timing's down. Um, so feeling good. Uh, not, not super nervous about it, but uh, it's going to be a different story when we're in there and the lights are on and there's a bunch of people in the crowd so uh, just your normal nerves but it's I don't know if that dance is even two minutes long so it's just something we got to get it and get up and do so I'm excited to do it I'm looking forward to it so yeah. I've never had an experience like this with any other classes. I've never gotten so close with the students. Um, I, I've had some very good classes, and I, but I think I've always had exchanges with my students that were very intellectual. I was excited about um, speaking to the audience that day. I, I had not really prepared, I mean, I had some notes, but I had not really prepared uh, very specifically what I was going to say. But I was very excited because I really wanted to share with everybody. There was so much going on that I was in a rush of activity. Um, so when, once we started dancing, um, I think that I was just like, okay, we're doing this, finally. I wasn't really thinking a lot, but I think that at some point in the middle of the performance, I think that when we do that part where we say, yeah, everybody, I think that it sort of hit me like, oh my God, we're actually doing this now, and we are all doing this together, and this is fun, and it's great. So it didn't start out from the beginning, um, but I wasn't nervous about the performance, which is not normal. I normally get nervous about performing, but that, uh, in that performance I wasn't nervous at all. Feel like it went by so quickly and we were like okay we were done um, yes but it was it was really 
It was wonderful. I, I think I was giddy with happiness. I was so excited. I think I'm going to miss my students. Actually, we had a performance on Saturday um, at the Sal City of Angels Studio in Cleveland. And it was a party, and it was much more informal than this one. And it was so happy. And everybody was even crazier. And you know, it was amazing. And, and so we were all saying goodbye. And it just felt like um, we have to end this moment of being so close together. And I do feel a sense of emptiness. I feel that I don't know what I'm going to do with my life, that I cannot imagine going back to teaching the way I normally teach. Guys, I, I guess you already know me, and uh, I'm, I've been with the Salsa class for a past semester now, and it's honestly one of the grandest experiences of my entire life. I've been dancing for, <laughs> at least bar and dancing, for around three years or so now, and this has honestly been the best experience. I couldn't have asked for more, and I have a lot to learn, and I can't thank Lennon and Dr. Santos and all of you guys enough for, for helping me along and, make, and making sure that I do my steps right. <laughs> so, thank you, really. Hello, everyone. I'm Isaac Beal, and I'm a graduating senior here at the University of Akron. And, oh, thank you. But, um, I just want to say a couple of words because uh, this class meant a lot to me because I'm really glad that I studied history in the first place. Um, and this class, sort of learning about history and just learning about um, just the truth of what happens in the world, what is Saul's, I had no idea before I started this class, let me mm -hmm. tell you. And I got to learn a lot of rich uh, Latino and American history through this class. Um, you got to see us try to um, perform some of it, but learning about um, everything that goes on behind it was amazing. And like you saw, um, our teachers, and in the video that was really awesome, wasn't it? But in the video, um, our, our teachers that we had, our professors, um, really bring a lot of passion into it that I never expected. Studying in college, first of all, but studying history. Um, and so I'm just really grateful for that experience. And I uh, just want to say thank you to you guys. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alicia Woods, and I'm a senior at Angels Studio. Thank everybody for being here today and coming out and supporting us. This is pretty great. Um, it's been a really unique but fun and exciting experience. But what I really wanted to do today was to say thank you to my classmates for all of their hard work. I love you guys so much. But also I wanted to say thank you to Dr. Santos and Lennon because you, you guys are both so brilliant. Uh, your choreography and your knowledge and together you guys make a great team and we couldn't have been more fortunate with better instructors. So please join me in giving them a I, I, I'm sure I'm never going to teach the way I normally teach, but I'm not going to be teaching salsa all the time. I mean, I, I feel a lot of satisfaction. It has been the most gratifying experience I've had as a teacher. Um, I think a lot of the times when I teach, I don't find it very rewarding. But this class was very rewarding, and so that there is the sense of accomplishment, but there is also the sense of, oh my God, it's over, and oh, I wish it continued. One thing that was very important to me, and I think to learning, um, was that this is uh, a class about the history of salsa, and it is about Latino culture, and we are, we are immigrants, right? I'm Ecuadorian, and he's Mexican, and we don't really talk a lot about it, but it's also part of these. Um, sort of creating an experience that is um, amazing and that is great and that is about Latino culture and is um, facilitated by Latino people, I think is a very, sort a, a very important source of pride for me um, because we, <laughs> at this moment in American history, when there is all this rejection of Mexican immigrants and all of that, so to, to do something like this um, is, is very important to me. Um, and that the students could appreciate that, our heritage, and what we do as wonderful. Um, that, that is something that I take um, from this class. Um, and the other one is that I had lost my father in, um, in May. And so I was in Ecuador for three months, um, taking care of my father's business and my mom's 
situation and um, and then I came back and I started preparing for this class and I all I did was prepare for this class and then the school started and then I've been doing this class for I've been so so wrapped up in working on this that I feel like I've been kind of distracted but then as we were preparing for the shows um, so Thursday Friday and Saturday I was incredibly sad that I could not share this with my father and that I knew that he would be so proud of what we were doing and what the students were doing and I couldn't share it and it hurt me a lot um, but at the same time it was a, it was a way a great way of sort of dealing with that I guess and saying yes I am still doing great things and I can still share what you know my professionalism and my ideas with the students and it's, and it's great so that has been a kind of it has, a, it's, it has been kind of difficult but at the same time it's amazing to go through all this sadness of life and create something so joyful out of it so that was another another part of what was going on in me um, on Friday and Saturday. But also I felt that I was learning with them. I was discovering with them. And that is so rich. Uh, I think I will remember that as well.